everyone, I'm back. We are at uh, Blaylock Park, or West Blaylock Park, as I call Ven Venice Botanical Gardens, and we are looking at a Coelurafe ridei, better known as the Perotus Palm or Everglades Palm. Now this palm is native to the Everglades, hence its name, and it is a clumping palmate palm that is, uh, it, it, it has many clumps. You can see there may actually be two different, two, uh, separate plants, but they just kept it together. Actually, maybe more than that, considering how many uh, little guys are come, trying to come up there. But uh, this, you know, they, they get this size. They, you can get ten or twelve huge trunks. But uh, it's related to the saw palmetto, Serenoa, and and to the sable palmetto. And so this is, but it's its own genus. And it's a monotypic genus, meaning it's a Coelurafe is a genus, and the only species is Wrightii. I forget who Wright was, but he was someone in the area, I believe. Uh, in Florida in the past. So this this plant grows, if you're in Florida, uh, it grows right near the corner of 29 and um, 41. The crossroads there, just north of there, there's an area called Jerome, and there's Thakahashi Strand. Royals also grow in this area. I've seen it growing wild there. I'm not sure. It probably, I think it grows also further south where there's no roads, um, but it does grow in quite a bit of water. It'll grow in some very swampy areas. It also tolerates a decent amount of, uh, of cold. It will easily take 20 to 22 degrees, and below that it'll probably start to burn. Um, this doesn't grow in central or northern Florida, so as far as wild it doesn't grow, but it'll grow naturally. You can grow this in Jacksonville, you can grow this in Orlando, no problem. Uh, Gainesville, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, all through the Gulf Coast, again, it's one of those, you know, and in the West Coast, uh, California, I'm sure it grows in air. I'm sure it can tolerate a decent amount of heat as well. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen them grown in Arizona, but I would imagine they would do fine there. And I imagine it would do well in most Mediterranean climates too. So South, Southern Europe, Northern Africa, uh, dry areas of Asia. So um, it is going to be a lot like Saranoa. Now it has, let's see if we can get a little closer here. I'm kind of hanging out in the shade because it's pretty hot and humid out here. The wind is a little help. It does have, um, it does have arm petioles, you can see right there from the trim part, trimmed uh, petioles, and it keeps it keeps its uh, its old petiole bases, and it does have uh, a, a fibrous thatching, and you, you go up to the top, and that's the crown, and uh, it's in they're in seed right now. It has interfoliar inflorescence. You can see they're not quite ready now. Most palms from uh, southeast in the Caribbean, they tend to seed around, the, they tend to mature around. Um, September to first to October first, maybe a little bit later, maybe a little bit earlier, depending on the plant. But uh, these tend to tend to mature within the month of September, so they're almost ready. Uh, they huh, they grow like sables. They're very easy. I always say that. I, I guess I I always say that you all you got to do is basically uh, they're they're having a little outer shell. You just kind of you can pick it out of the shell. You pop it in. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be well-draining soil. It can be mucky soil. In fact, it might even be better um, because these are used to growing in swamps. And you just uh, add the heat and voila, they're just going to grow. They're pretty easy. You will have, if you put 50 seeds in, you'll probably get 49 to 50 seedlings come up. So, um, I'm trying to think what else is notable. There's, oh, so there's going to be some prominent trunks. For example, let's say there's uh, 12 main heads here. You're going to have about uh, 50 to 60 smaller heads, and they're not going to try and get big. They're uh, they're usually trimmed back. They're not going to run like a bamboo. They're just going to kind of keep a, cl a clump. They're never going to get any bigger than this. Um, you can trim it up. You can you can chop some of these down and make it smaller, or you can let them grow out. It's it, it kind of lets you. Uh, uh, tear escape for yourself. You can make it as big or as small as you'd like. Um, so uh, they are used a lot for um, like centerpieces and for sometimes for hedging. They make good hedges if they're if they're tightly planted and um, if they are in the wild they tend to just they're a pretty good barrier. No one wants to walk through armed um, leaf bases like that or sorry armed petioles like that. Um, through through a swamp, so or through anyone's yard. There are some palms that are perfect for hedging. This one's pretty good. I give it like a eight out of ten for hedging. There's some there's some better ones out there, but it's not bad. Uh, but most of the time, they, they are a centerpiece because they make they have a nice round 
grouping uh, or clumping, and they're pretty pretty good sized clumps. Uh, you can see behind it the Caryota minus, the clumping fishtail I've done a vlog on before. Um, that one is not nearly as big. So if you want a big centerpiece, not a lot of maintenance. I mean, you do have to trim the fronds, but other than that, they're just gonna kind of make a big centerpiece, uh, for lack of a better term. So I will leave that there. Uh, if you have any more questions about this palm, leave it down below uh, or any comments. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more, uh, more vlogs like this. And I will see you guys next time.